Hello, I'm Andrew Fryer, and in the second part of my demo on Ski, I'm going to be showing you how to configure the product. In my first video, I got to this point, where we started Ski for the first time, and this configuration wizard appears. Let's click Start. The first thing Ski does is to give you an option to use domain group policy or local group policy to control the computers that you're trying to manage. I'm going to go for the domain group policy, I've already got this set up. And I could put an extra account in here, say the domain administrator account, to make sure that I can do that. Or use the account that was used when I set up Ski. Ski will create firewall exceptions to make sure that it can control each of the machines through its standard ports. You can alter these if you wish to. One of the many features of Ski is its ability to do remote assistance, i.e. take control of another computer and help a user with a particular task they're having trouble with, or to resolve a support issue. I'm going to turn that on. I can also get Ski to automatically check whether there are any new computers that have been added to the network rather than manually putting them in myself. I'm going to automatically discover all my computers because they're all on my local network. You might want to change that if you've got branch offices and so on to save some of your network bandwidth. You can set up a daily report to show you how healthy your whole network is and get it sent to you in an email. I'm not going to bother with that for this demonstration. If you have a proxy server, you should declare it here. If not, Ski will go out onto the internet directly and try and get those updates. That's just going to take a few seconds to run. This screen shows you what applications you can monitor following that synchronization process. And I'm going to leave all the defaults on. Here I can collect all the application errors that are happening on all the machines I'm managing and gather them together in one directory, which I specify here. Here I can elect to forward errors to Microsoft, and I'm just going to go with the basic option. You can specify which updates are downloaded for which tools. Uh, manually overriding it here, for example, I can sit down to my personal favourite, SQL Server, and say that I'm only interested in putting down stuff for SQL Server 2008. But for now I'm going to go with the automatic option. I can do the same thing for languages, i.e. pull down specified language packs. I'm just going to stay with English here. And here I can choose what types of updates I want to download. I can leave the defaults on or I can override it and I might decide that I'm interested in drivers as well for example. Just click next now. In this screen I can choose whether the updates are going to be applied automatically. I can choose to approve them and force the installation and for my client computers I've decided I'm going to force installation after five days and so in other words I've, they've got five days grace and then I'm going to force it. For my service I'm going to apply that stuff manually. I'm now presented with the traditional summary screen to confirm my choices and when I'm happy I can click configure to start the process. And off it goes. This again is going to take some time so I'll be cutting the video to speed things up. So that process is now completed and I'm now given the option to go and discover those computers that are out there in my infrastructure so that I can start to manage them. I'm going to leave that option check and hit close. Initially, you won't see a lot of change in this view up here until that discovery process has taken place. So I'm going to stop the video here and leave it for about three hours and then come back and see what Ski has found out of my network so that we can start to manage it. 